are we at the point where the Australian government and obviously at departments and so on have to develop options for Australia if this invasion does happen, so we're ready to move if it happens and there's no delay? Well, I know you want to sort of talk about a hypothetical scenario, Tom, about war and all that. What What is in our national interest, frankly, is to do everything possible to de-escalate the situation. No one wants conflict in the region, and, and it is not in our interests to see that happen clearly. Um, and I don't think it's in China's interest uh, practically either because we're talking about a, a massive impact on the global economy if there, if, if there was such conflict and, frankly, a massive impact on China's economy and uh, the gains that they've made in um, economic growth over decades uh, would be put in peril and jeopardised. Look, there's a lot of things happening domestically in China. There's the Party Congress coming up in October. Um, some analysts have talked about how that is uh, partly the reason why President Xi is... Um, you know, reaching for these sort of military exercises to, to you know, burnish his, uh, his uh, nationalist credentials ahead of the Party Congress and potentially uh, to be extended uh, for a third term. So there's some domestic mm. politics involved as well. But there is a real question here around the impact that it will have on all of us. And I think it's important for us to continue to push, to de-escalate, to urge restraint, and for China to also recognise that it's in its best interest for uh, there to be a status quo around the Taiwan Straits. What we've said with our One China policy is we want to see peaceful dialogue. Any evolution in that, in that situation has to be done through uh, peaceful means and through dialogue. But yeah, again, but again, that's, you know, the hope that that will be resolved that way. But so far, clearly, it's falling on deaf ears, given this latest well, development. No, are we at a point where... which? Well, well, let me just ask this question. Are we at a point yeah. where, in some way, China needs to get sent a message that, without revealing what any one country, including Australia, would do, that this would not be a cost-free exercise for China? Look, I'll just make a point about your question. It's not just a hope. It is a pathway forward that we are all uh, undertaking because it is in our national interest to prevent conflict in the region. It, it is in our national interest for there to be stability in the region for our economic interests and, and our national security interests. So it's more than just a hope. It is a path that we're trying to navigate. Now, the, the, military, the live military exercises that have been undertaken in response to a congressional visit to Taiwan, uh, we have said are disproportionate. And they are disproportionate. Like, let's be serious here. There was a Senate uh, visit to Taiwan uh, a couple of months ago and not a word was said. So mm. clearly there's something going on here. Um, with respect to the other but that's part the other of thing. Question, it, yeah, is, go it is in Australia, Australia's uh, responsibility to always prepare, you know, defence forces, our security agencies always prepare for every possible scenario, frankly, uh, and make sure that we have the right capability. And, and that's what... Uh, Defence Minister Richard Miles is doing uh, with some urgency, clearly, since we've taken government. Um, the criticism has also come from China's Foreign Ministry being directed at Penny Wong. Has the prospect of a reset of the relationship gone now? Uh, look, there, there, there's a lot of things going on, and I think that our Foreign Minister has been entirely reasonable in pointing out the, uh, the, the benefit to de-escalate tensions uh, and that why that is in the interests of all the countries in the region, including China, to de-escalate and to lower temperatures. And she's been entirely reasonable in what she's said. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, mm. uh, heavy rhetoric, if I could put it that way, um, at the diplomatic level. I, I, I'd never discount the possibility for uh, a continuance of trying to stabilise a relationship. But it's Indeed, not looking great, is it? No, no, but there's been, um, you know, obviously uh, bumps in the relationship over a period of time, and there's been some progress more recently with the first engagement between our foreign minister and and their foreign minister after three years of, of non-engagement. Our defence minister, Richard Miles, met the Chinese defence minister. Dialogue is good, Tom. Uh, any dialogue is good. It's much much better because it, right. it's about being able to engage. So we'll continue to, to pursue stabilising the relationship. Peter Khalil, good to leave it there. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Tom.